this whole exhibition is goes all the way back in my childhood. And it goes back since I was born. And uh, I had a, a grand aunt named Aunt Molly. And she she was this woman that grew up in Martha's Vineyard in the East Coast, Boston, Martha's Vineyard. And she I didn't know who she was or what she was doing because I wasn't even born. She's running around as this young, wild sculptor, knowing a bunch of different people. And as I know how it is, you're an artist, you're young, you meet people, you're running around the world. Well, at that time, she was running around with a group of people that consider themselves as these kind of mystics. People that were involved with like chance, and they were artists, they were painters, sculptors, photographers. And, um, <coughs> and every time when I was a kid, this, my grand aunt would come out and drive. She'd just show up on our doorstep. And she would, she would drive like in a Jaguar. Be a different car every time. But the car was filled with feathers, stones, all kinds of things. And our family never really could quite get what's going on. <laughs> she was an unusual person, so this is, I've got a lot to say. But anyhow, she ended up just spontaneously showing up and she would bring like this world of, of kind of, of new experience to everyone in our whole family. And she knew Paul Caponegro. And so that was prior to my life. I was born in 1963. She knew Paul in the 50s. And she bought Paul Caponegro his first and larger and bought him, I don't know how she bought this, but and bought him a camera <laughs> and bought a light meter. And they run around together in Massachusetts in the vineyard and they photograph together. And they photographed a lot together. Learning photography together. I think Molly wanted to learn how to be a photographer. And so Molly was married at the time with a guy named Herbert. And they all supported everybody on the vineyard, Martha's Vineyard, including Paul and in Massachusetts. And there were a group of other photographers. There was, well, there was another photographer named Maria Casindas. And she... She and Paul would photograph, I guess, these dolls and things in the 50s, little faces. And I guess faces back then were very important, you know, for the, kind of the psychology and, and kind of the interest of, of, of the persona and such behind these dolls. So when I, when Molly <coughs> passed away, I ended up getting and receiving all these incredible photographs of dolls and, and sticks and snow. <laughs> things with no names on them. I didn't know who did them. And, uh, and like, uh, I think about five or six years ago, Paul Caponegro had a show. Scott Nichols back here was with me. As well as Benny Chin. Benny Chin was with me, who was a great, great photographer. He was great. There's like a whole group. We got Stan Zernick here. We have uh, David Johnson over here. We have Charles Wong. I don't know where you are, Charles. Over there. Um, who am I missing? Who am I missing? And, and, and a group of photographers at the time that all knew, all knew Paul. And so in the 50s, this is before I was born, I just only learned all this stuff after, after you know, when I, I, I grew up knowing this stuff. So they all had a long relationship with them. There's some great pictures of them together photographing when they're studying or just enjoying life of photographing together. And so, Anyhow, I handed all these photographs I got. I went and met Paul with Scott Nichols at the Sonoma Valley Museum like five, six years ago, something like that, something. for his son, John Paul Cavanagro. And so his son is a photographer as well. It works pretty much, I, all I know is he works in the digital medium. And they're pretty incredible. They're like split and kind of symmetrical, spiritual compositions, all in color. So we went to that show, we met Paul there, and we I brought the bag full of all the goodies that I got from my aunt from the past day. And I spread them all out on the table with Benny Chin, myself, Scott, and Paul Cavanagher. We sat down and I started pulling things out, and Paul's just his eyes are just tear fluttered with tears. Because he's looking at a picture of Molly Khan, who was my granddaughter, who did this whole number with him in his life. And so this is my background of just getting to know this photographer's work. I didn't know how important of a photography he, he really was until I started getting older and older. 
recognizing that he was a photographer that um, devoted his entire life to photography. And, and not many people devote their entire life to doing fine art photography. There's only a few people in the world that can actually pull it off. And, um, so I ended up growing up looking at pictures my whole life with sticks and snow and looking at feathers and stones and all these kind of crazy things coming in my life. And so I've always been very curious about photography as a young, young child because of this unusual relationship. So my eyes were open to photography. Now I stand here and I see these, a lot of people are photographers here. There's some great artists here. So it's so important. This exhibition is important to me. It's integral to who I am as a person. And it's also, I have so much respect for the imagery that's on the walls. I mean, I grew up smelling a book that smelled like Martha's Vineyard of these you know, <laughs> dandelions and sunflowers. I mean, I would like smell the book because I inherited the book. I built the Martha's Vineyard. <laughs> and then, and Molly, she was such an unusual person. Wherever she'd go, she doused everything. She had a little dowsing pendulum in her pocket, and she'd just say, Is Stefan going to go? <laughs> Is Stefan going to school? At that school? Is that the school he's going to go to? Oh, yeah. It looks like you're going to be going out. Let's go. Get in the car, Stefan. Let's go. <laughs> Jump in the car and we'll keep off feathers and stones and jaguars and flying over the hills. Was destiny. It was destiny through a pendulum. <laughs> and so this is the life Paul is about. Paul's work, you know, it's about this kind of, you know, just finding these very special um, visual experiences that he just stops and just must. I mean, he's not here. And I can't speak for him, but I just know how, as I'm a photographer, I'd say takes a lifetime to kind of make these images come true and be so like important and each one I look at each one each one really is just super super important when I think of him and he's a wonderful man he's this he's like classic pianist he's he's just this incredible person and, just, and he just when you talk to him he's just loving and filled with you know so much you want to <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's very great. I'm very glad to have Stan Zernick here, um, and David and, and Charles. They all they all know Paul uh, directly, and I know a lot of other people. Scott knows Paul directly. Uh, Scott did some incredible shows for for Paul in the past at his gallery in San Francisco, and you know him. You've known him a long time, and so. It's like a good friend. It's nice to have. So we just must toast a good friend and yes. a great photographer. So I say here, cheers and right. Cheers. Cheers.